Oh, boy, that zoomed in. You can see every pore and a pimple. Anyway, hello. So, <clears throat> what is today? It's Friday night. I'm cooking supper. I uh, Tonight, I have some chicken. And while it's um, thighs, so it's definitely a fattier meat than... Uh, our thighs are fat, fattier than um, uh, breast, but still in general, it's not a fatty meat. So, and I have some uh, hamburgers that I had bought. I think they were like maybe 90, no, maybe 90, 10, something like that. So, um, me personally, I want to make sure I get plenty of fat, so I I added some beef suet, and um, I'll show you what that looked like to start with. And then um, what I did was I got my cooking shears and I cut it up. They look like little potatoes or little turnips in there, and um, <clears throat> I've got that cooking, and that's what's going to make the oil and add the extra fat to my burgers and my chicken. I'm doing my chicken first because, because or I'm doing the ground beef first because, I don't know, I just want to. Um, so the meatloaf mixture that I made this week, it's kind of giving me a little bit of heartburn. I think I definitely had a little too much seasoning. <clears throat> so I'm going to go a little lighter on the seasoning. Something, you know, I, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. And been hearing some people talking about, um, you know, they're having some different type of health issues. And, um, and like one lady, she's just talking about how her potassium is low. And how a lot of times something that you hear people talk about is make sure you salt your food, salt your food, salt your food. <clears throat> and sometimes people will add salt to their water and just, they only kind of focus on the salt when uh, there's other electrolytes out there. And I, I'm no expert, I'm no scientist, I do not eat nose to tail. Um, but what I do know is that, um, you know, I use no salt, which is potassium. i thankfully I've used that all along. So, um, I go Tuesday to get my labs done and, um, and this will be the first time I'll have my labs done since I started. Well, who am I kidding? It'll be the first time I had labs done since 2017. So, hold on. I got to blow. Time out. Alright. Um, I'm not the best at getting my annual lab work done. So, um, um, and last time I got it, I was pretty hardcore keto. And I had lost about, um, I think I had lost about 45 pounds on keto at that point. So, um, it'll be interesting to compare my labs now versus my labs then. Because um, at that time, you know, I was eating vegetables. I still ate a high fat diet, but, um, a lot of the fat came from cream and sour cream and um, um, I think I ate a lot of chicken back then. Um, like I said, a lot of vegetables. So, um, yeah, that's what I was doing at that time. So this beef suet, it's cooking up and it's frying up and... Um, the point, oh, I was going to show you how it looked before I put it in there. So, it 
came as one big chunk, and that is how it looks. Um, I cut some pieces off, and then I cut them into small bite sizes. Some people eat this raw, and just for grins earlier, I took just a little tiny bit to see what it tastes like. And it really doesn't have a taste. There's no flavor to it at all. It's kind of has the same texture as butter. Um, it's not. I had never done it before until today. What I just did because I've always been a little bit grossed out by that. But um, whenever I pulled this out of the refrigerator. I had been watching a video and where she's talking about needing to add more fat and so she uh, was adding some raw beef suet to her to her diet and uh, since like I said I'm about to make some chicken and the chicken is not a fatty type of meat. So I wanted to add some fat to mine, so, you know, frying that up there. Along with my burgers. Oh. So here, you know, a lot of people do intuitive eating, and they eat based off what they feel like. And I get it. I do. I get it. But, you see, I don't know from day to day what I'm going to be hungry for. So... I, you know, and I have a freezer with food in it, and I need to do something. I have to pull something out to eat. So, um, so for me, you know, I go to my freezer and say, well, all right, I guess. What's this? Oh, that's bones. That won't work. Um, here. Okay. So I say, well, here's some pork steak. I'll pull this out. That's what PKSTK is for me. So I'll pull that out and then uh, I'll let that defrost in my refrigerator. And then, like right now, for tomorrow, there's some um, top sirloin, which, there again, that's a lower fat meat. So that also is going to need some suet added to it. So, uh, Anyway, so there's my burgers. Oh, mercy. So now... Anyway, the other only other option I had was chicken. Because I pulled some chicken out. So that's what we're going to have tonight. We as in you and me. Me as in this is what I'm going to be putting in my mouth. So I've got the boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm not doing anything to them. Just... Tonight I'm not going to bread them or do anything weird and fancy. I'm just going to stick them in. I open them up. I've also been hearing about some other kind of, I don't want to say phenomenon, that's probably the wrong term, but something, some carnivores, another carnivore experience, her hemoglobin A1C has been going up. And, um, you know, that's kind of weird because if you're not eating carbohydrates, then you shouldn't have an A1C problem. I'm going to cross in front of you. Just a minute here. My trash can's on the other side. So now I'm going to cross in front of you again. Woohoo! Hello. Um, but anyway, so yeah, she got, I've been hearing some people, you know, I mean, but that doesn't mean, you know, the diet is bad. There's all kinds of people that have issues with, you know, just their body. So now I'm going to cover that chicken. I'm going to set my timer. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
I do everything for about five or six minutes. So we'll let that go and I'll come back to you when that beeps and we'll see where we're at. Let me let you see something over here. You see that sous chef, Sam, that's Sammy. He loves being here when I'm cooking. I'm gonna have to hold you up. See over there, little Baxter, he's been banished to the bedroom. Look at him. He likes to get aggressive with his siblings when I'm cooking. It's the weirdest thing. Um, but <clears throat> he has a little dominant streak in him. So, yeah. So I had to, I, uh, my house is kind of a circle. So the bedroom comes off the kitchen over there. And then there's a, um, um, then it goes down and then like a hallway and then there's a bathroom and the hallway then it comes into the living room and then that living room comes right over here to the kitchen it's on the other side of my refrigerator over there so anyway <clears throat> so by closing that door to the bedroom and then putting that gate up i've trapped baxter and his little butt in there <clears throat> so he can't uh He's the only one in there, so he's not going to be attacking one of his siblings. And they don't like, like teeth aren't meeting skin. But it's a lot, they're very loud, and it's kind of like they're anxious, and it's kind of like, like this, you know, a lot of this going on. You know, like biting at each other, not biting each other. He's a great Pyrenees mix, but... um Anyway, so I just don't want there to be further problems, so I'm just trying some behavioral type things, and separating him while I'm cooking was one of the things I'm trying, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Meanwhile, it's so funny, people talk about aggressive breeds. Meanwhile, let me just, that's Sammy right there. Sammy <clears throat> looks like he is a... Maybe a pit bull lab mix. Let's zoom in on that. Oh, that's as zoomed in as it goes. See him and Joe. See him and Joe. Look at. Hey. Hi, Bobby. Do good job, friends. So <clears throat> he looks like he's maybe pit lab mix. So it's so funny. Up oh, and there's Lulu. Now y'all aren't getting any food. Go on, bugs. I'm sorry. I got you excited. But um, and then there's. That's the one that Baxter tries to go after. And Baxter won't let him around when I'm trying to eat. So, anyway, we're having some issues. So, yeah, we're trying some new stuff. All right, I'll zip back in. Well, it's got about a minute, but I'll zip in when it's done. All right, timer's going to go off in 28 seconds. So, here's what I'm doing. I know you've seen it set up this way, but... I don't think I've set it up this way on camera. So I'm gonna flip my meat. Flip my chicken. And then, I got one piece that's pretty fatty. Or, I shouldn't say fatty, pretty thick. And i um, get my thermometer here. Upside down, Terry. Okay, pork, pork, poultry. Oh, darn it. Now I gotta scroll through everything to get back to poultry. And pork, pork, poultry. Okay, so poultry, it's gonna be backwards, y'all, but poultry should get 165 degrees. Sammy, get back, buddy. Go on. So I'm gonna take my thermometer and stick it in the fattest part of that piece of chicken but I kind of need it to be at a slant <clears throat> so I'm just going to kind of let it oh oh that can't be so let's try another well it's saying it's done what about this one 188 Ah, yeah, it's trying to make me sick. Um, 
So now I'll put the lid on it. I found a spot. It says 161. I don't know how long it'll take, but so now what I'm going to do is leave that in there. And when the thermometer tells me that it's done, then uh, I'll know that I can pull it out and eat it. So it's got four degrees to go. Now I know that it will rise after I pull it out, but I still want it. I got it right about the middle of that fatty section of the chicken. So when it rises, when it dings, I'll come back to you. It's been about two minutes, and uh, this is why the timer. It's nice, but a thermometer is much better. So. I'm going to take these little ones out first. I did add a little bit of ghee to it. Because um, it, it was drying out. from The suet was drying out. Trying different little sections here. Segments. So it's all in the 180s, 190s. Okay. So, turn off my thing. So it's saying that it's done. And like I always do, I'm going to grab a little Clorox bleach wipe. And uh, I'm going to wipe it off, clean it off. Because, you know, that's in meat. And this is the best way I know. Soap and water is fine too, but you know, it can't get much better than, you know, bleach. So that's a bleach wipe. So now I'll just kind of set the thermometer back for tomorrow or the next day. Um, and this will be my supper supper. I'll still have my, uh, those little chunks of beef to it. If I wanted to, uh, if I, I could add some heavy cream and maybe a little bit of cheese and make a, some type of a roux or a bechamel sauce, but I don't want to because I think this will be plenty with the, with the hamburgers and the chicken. But <clears throat> what I am going to do is take this leftover grease fat, rendered fat, that's the term. I'm going to pour that over all of it. And then I will eat this. But let me get a fork and show you what it looks like. Because while it's cooling a little bit, what I'm going to do is to clean my cast iron skillet so that way it's drying on the stovetop while it's while I'm eating so there's my chicken it's kind of seared mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not too much seasoning tonight I was just in a bland mood I've been burping so much from that stupid meatloaf I made last week. Anyway, so that's what we're having for dinner tonight. That right there, that's my dinner. Um, like I said, I'm going to clean my skillet and get it drying. And uh, then I'll have it ready to go tomorrow. Um, it's best if you can clean it right away because it's still hot. And um, it's easier to clean and scrape and stuff when it's hot. And you definitely want to use hot water to clean it too. Um, and I use soap like I've showed y'all before. So that makes the task much easier. So anyway, there you go. That was Friday night supper. Tomorrow I will be making my um, meatloaf. I've been kind of having a scratchy throat, so I think I'm going to pull some uh, broth out of the freezer. Here's one. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to take some of this broth out of the freezer and let it uh, defrost. And uh, I think that would make my throat feel better. It's allergy season and, you know, some people say that this way of eating helps their allergies, but not mine. And so, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I'm going to defrost that and eat, just sip on that tomorrow before anything yucky gets to me. And that's that bone broth I made in a previous video. So there you go. You are in the loop. That is Friday night eating. Oh, oh my. That's a shot up my nose. <laughs> didn't need to see all the way up there. Anyway, hi. Okay, one more thing. Look at that. Look at that cast iron. See, I didn't, not oiling it yet. Well, I don't oil it anymore. I mean, I oiled it whenever I made it, but see how smooth that is. No, yeah, look at that shine. This is an old cast iron. It's probably a couple hundred years old. And that jobber has seen a lot of meals. So anyway, just be good to your cast iron and it'll be good to you. Okay, now I'm shutting up. Don't forget, click like and click subscribe if you want to see any more of my videos. Okay, I'm not going to show you my nose again, but while that's, oh, oh, while that's drying, it dries for 15 minutes. While that's drying, I'm going to eat my supper right, right, right there. I'm going to eat that. Okay, now I'm shutting up.